What's up, everybody? Freeze Drake up in the house, and I'm joined today by Mr. David Wise, my compadre for today's episode. Dave, tell people what we're talking about today. Everybody, talking defensive depth chart for spring. Start with the D-line. Move a little back to the linebacking core, if there is one. And then the DBs. Shockers. By hella, hella shockers. But today, folks, thank you guys so much for loving sport and making Locked on Symbols your first listen each and every single day. And hopefully we can make it through this episode with, you know, Dave having a consistent interconnection. But with all that being said, let's go on with the show. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Locked On Seminoles. As at the top of the hour, it's your boy Drake, and today I've been joined by Mr. David Wise. Dave is still connected to the internet, so hopefully we're able to get the show off, off without a hitch. Dave, what's going on, my guy? I like the hair going on right now. Yeah, I'm doing good, Drake. Uh, one day closer to spring football. Um, basketball season was a major disappointment, so I need football back, and it can't get a lot worse than it was last year, or the year before that, or the year before that or the year before that. That's very, very true. And hopefully our team can be a lot more consistent than your internet connection. But folks, as, yeah. top of the hour, as we said, we're going to be doing the defensive spring, sorry, the spring game depth chart for the defense side of the ball today. Check out yesterday's episode. Where we talked about offense with Max. Unfortunately, Max is actually, as you said earlier, he's out of town for the week. So you're stuck with us for the probably today, maybe tomorrow, but hopefully we're going to back into before end of the week's out. Uh, Dave, so do you want to do DBs first? Defensive line first, or you want to do linebacker play second first? Or my girls out from the front to back, start with the D line. All right, let's go with the D line. So the D line, we lost obviously Jermaine Johnson to the draft. Kier Thomas, the same damn thing. But we're bringing back, you know, surprise player and Dennis Briggs up in the middle, who apparently I think yeah. is, I think he's shed a little bit of weight to pull that play that fox role that Kier Thomas kind of fulfilled last year. We have Quayshon Fuller also. Like, who do you see? We have the four spots available right now. Who do you see actually? who is going to be starting for the spring game this coming April? Well, inside, it's pretty cemented in my view. Um, I'm surprised that we have the talent returning inside that we do. Fabian Lovett, I, look, if I was his advisor, I would have told him to go pro. Had a great year last year. Um, I think he, that he could have played professionally next year. Uh, glad to have him back. He's got to be your probably most locked-in starter of the bunch. Um, but we're also lucky to return a guy like Robert Cooper. Uh, Coop is going to be somebody that plays that nose tackle position and that has a lot of experience and that has played at a high level at times. And I expect a big year from him. So the interior D line, I think, is pretty solidified and maybe just as much so as going several years back. I feel as good about the interior as I have in a long time. It's like you said. You work your way outwards, and we're returning very little in terms of proven starters or even depth. Like, we got the big name in Jared Verse. He, you got to assume he's a starter. And if Jared Verse isn't a starter quality from even from day one, let alone later on in the season, I'm going to be very worried about this pass rush because we're expecting a lot of him right from day one. Your defensive breakout player of the year candidate. I'm sure you'll get to uh, we're, you know, we have some expectations of some other guys, uh, but it starts and ends on the outside with Jared verse. And like you said, if, if Dennis Briggs can play more of an outside role in the D line, my God, he was good rushing the passer last year. And like, look up the PFF stats. He was one of the most effective pass rushers on the team, Jermaine Johnson included. So we got some good things returning. Yeah, our defensive line as a whole, probably from last year, was nothing sort of remarkable. I, in, in my personal opinion, it's the main reason why Adam Fuller came back for another year because I think if they, the line didn't have any sort of success last year, the entire defense as a whole would have suffered. I think you're right. I think up the middle, you definitely do have Fabian Lovett. I mean, Fabo, that kid is definitely going to get drafted last year, and they max alluded to it yesterday. And then Robert Cooper, to me, I, I like Robert Cooper a lot. I think he's really good at stuffing the middle, and that's something that you, yeah. know, you always need along the line. Me... I like Jared Verse a lot. I just wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't start from day one. And it's mainly just from a, you know, a scheme. But he's also, he's coming from the FCS level up to the division one level. That's a big, big jump too. 
I mean, we saw with Marcus Kuzni, obviously they're not the same caliber of talented player, but we saw kind of struggles between that. So to me, it's going to be going to be be Fabian Lovett on the inside with Robert Cooper. And on the yeah. outside, I think you have Dennis Briggs fulfilling that Fox role because you're right. He was the most efficient and most effective lineman actually out of all four of them before he got hurt. Crazy. And then Quayshawn Fuller, who like a lot of people kind of like were not super high on after he was in the, I think, Wooly's last class. And he he came on last year. And that, he's, he's a prime reason why like, I actually do believe in John Pooch as, as a developer developer of actually that talent. So I think probably you might see Quayshawn Fuller and then Jared Verse spelling him for pass rushing down. So maybe you'll see Jared Verse like take the starting role towards the middle of the year as it gets acclimated to the speed of Division One Power Five football. But to me, it's Fuller, Briggs, Cooper, and Love It. Yeah, I think I think the thing that scares me for this D line isn't the starters. I even if Jared Verse doesn't start from day one, which I I don't know if I'd be more surprised or disappointed by. Um, I think. Like you said, I, I would expect Quayshon Fuller to be a serviceable player until Verse is ready to be acclimated. But I think the concern for me is the depth. Um, who really is backing up those guys? Like at the Fox spot, is Leonard Warner your second there? I mean, Jesus Christ, he's been here for 15 years. It's it's absurd. It, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, yes, Quayshon Fuller or Jared Verse substituting as backup for one another is pretty good. But behind Fabo, who do you have? Is it uh, is it Josh Farmer who put on some good weight this offseason, but he doesn't have a ton of experience? Um, behind Cooper, it's probably Malcolm Ray, who, again, doesn't have a ton of meaningful experience, and we don't have a lot of known quantity backing these guys up, at least on the inside. So I don't know. Seeing what the rotation looks like is going to be more interesting to me than who the starters are, who I feel pretty confident about. Yeah, and I think actually it's really funny you mentioned like Joshua Farmer because all reports are saying that he's put on an immense amount of weight because even from high school, his coach I think was saying that he's someone that lives and breathes in the gym. He's been massive. And also, if you ever notice, like Odell is super hard on players that he has a lot of belief in their talent. And I remember, I think it was last year, I think Max pointed it out, where like I think it was during the um, the UMass game where – Odell was like lighting some kid up on the sideline for some effort play. And it was Josh Farmer. So maybe, oh, he might be, you know, our, our unsung hero for a few plays next year because he's definitely a good player. You got Sean Bray Jackson, too, someone who also in the same class as him. Byron Turner coming back from injury. And then we have other, you know, sophomores such as Patrick Payton and George Wilson who maybe might, you know, spell some certain downs and get more playing time, too. But I think you're right where our core and that we're going to live and die by his D line, especially up the middle with Fabian, Fabian Lovett, who's going to, I think he can catapult himself into potentially second round material this year. And it's going to be something to watch out for. Cause I think he's definitely your best player and a leader on your defense, not named Jamie Robinson. It's easy to say we can't afford an injury at like any of the meet, any position you can say that, but I just worry if on the interior D line, we suffer an injury to either Lovett or Cooper what the hell that's going to look like in terms of our every down starter. I mean, it's going to, it's not going to be the best of looks, honestly. It's going to be, I mean, it sucks, right? I mean, that's what you never want to do, but I think, I think what's better. And I kind of, I said it yesterday about the offensive line. I think now we have like, we're not putting in 18 and 19 year olds. We're not putting in pure true freshmen anymore. When someone goes down and gets hurt. Now we're putting someone like a third year player to back these people up on the two deep, which is, Something that we could not say, you know, years past is also the reason sure. why teams have not, you know, been performing very well the past few years. And folks, if you want to perform well with your New Year's resolution, head on over to built.com because you know here at Locked On Samples, we're huge fans of the built bar. Dave, as you know, is the cookie dough Casanova. Your boy yeah. is the I'm the cherry barcia connoisseur. And you have Max over there, the head of the peanut butter brownie brigade. But folks, if you're not a fan of those three flavors, there are 16 delicious flavors to choose from. 130 calories, four, gra- four grams of carbs, less to low, little, little to no sugar, and also 17 grams of protein. So head over to built.com and use promo code LOCKED15, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and you'll get a 15% bonus off your order. Once again, promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. Folks, get healthy with Built Bars at built.com. And now, Dave, we're you know done with the the big uglies up the middle, up the up front, as they say. Let's over to the linebackers, and I'm going to let you start off with this one because I think you have a better feel 
about what you, we are going to see there. And hopefully mm, do I, I think, I mean, I, I kind of think you do, you, you, you've harped on linebackers thing before anyone else did. And then Max has been on that train too, as well. So linebacker linebackers, who do you think we see actually starting for the spring game? Well, Drake, yes. Let's talk about the worst position on the field for Florida state outside of special teams. Yeah. Uh, linebacker. I can't tell you the last time I felt good about linebacker, maybe 2015, 2016 at the latest. Hasn't been since then. Uh, is this year going to be any different than years past? I think we brought in one guy that I feel really good about that I know you do and that the whole fan base probably should. That's Tatum Bethune, the transfer from UCF. I think he is plug and play as a day one starter. And if he's not, I would be absolutely stunned way more even than like not seeing Jared Burr start from day one. If Tatum Bethune is not starting day one, that means only that somebody at the linebacker position, like, a, I don't know, a DJ Lundy, uh, for example, has improved so much from last year that they can't be kept off the field or Tatum Bethune isn't ready. And if he's not ready day one, after having so much experience put in at UCF, I am going to feel really bad about this unit again. And I know it's only one player. I know it's a transfer from a G5 school, but I'm expecting a lot from him and to be the leader, leader of that unit. Stepping aside from him, I don't know. Is this the year of Amari Gaynor? Um, look, he's been here a while. He's got experience in the system. He's played a lot of meaningful snaps. He's shown flashes of ability to play at a high level. Uh, the consistency hasn't been there, I guess you could say, to be kind of nice. Um, I, I don't know. He's going he's gonna to compete for a starting spot. Uh, yikes, man. Aside from the two of them, Stephen Dix, DJ Lundy, your your take on DJ Lundy, I think a lot of people share the same view. Stephen Dix came in as a highly touted recruit, has not played at a particularly high level. He was one of our lowest rated defenders of all defenders at any position last year. Um, and he stopped seeing the field as much as a result. There, There's talent there. I just... I can't tell you what I expect to see outside of guys like Tatum Bethune and, you know, hopefully a step up from Amari Gaynor. Yeah. I mean, I think Tatum Bethune, I think you're right. is definitely going to be the leader on that linebacking court. I mean, you've already seen the heat. I think he was one of the first players that actually earned a black jersey during tour of duty, which yeah. is a really, really good sign to see, you know, a transfer come in and literally already making an impact or have the respect of his teammates in that kind of way. And then with Amari Gaynor, it's really funny. Amari Gaynor to me is going to be like Josh Kando or Janaris Robinson, where literally like his last year, he's like, he's going to have a solid, decent year, but then he's going to get drafted a lot higher than any of us think. And he's going to have like a long, long ass career in the NFL because based off his natural talent alone. Why not? Why not? I mean, like, I mean, he's a good kid. I mean, he, he, he looks is. great. He, he looks great. He like, you can see that he definitely works really hard to improve his craft. So I think those two you have right there. And then Kalen Deloach, I mean, Kalen Deloach is really funny to me because I, he, he probably was one of the high kids I was the highest on in Taggart's first like actual full cycle recruiting class because it was between us and Michigan for for him at linebacker. And then you hear all the reports, not last season, but the year before Norvell's first year that Kalen Deloach was just lighting everybody up at, in spring practice, summer practice, and also in fall camp. And then does, does little to nothing. And then this past year, which he finally gets less loot, let loose a little bit. And to me, it's kind of that goes to, you know, Chris Martin and Shannon probably having a little more say, like, hey, let's, you know, we should have him out there a little bit more because he's your best coverage linebacker. And then he rewarded the team by playing probably the best linebacker play overall. And I mean, those three are solidified, but I'm actually a lot more comfortable now with the depth we have at linebacker. Like, I don't mind DJ Lundy, like playing a reserve role because sure. he's going to go one direction. He's going to do that great. He's a great run stuffer. Steven Dix Jr., I think something is there because he's probably one of those kids that's like Max said about Diesel like last week. He's probably he was probably born 10 years too late because he'd probably be an yeah. amazing linebacker back in the 90s. But if he's your reserve linebacker, I'm fine with that. But then you also have Jadares Green McKnight, who's making the transition from safety. And then okay. Brandon Gann, too, who also was one of your best run, stop, run stoppers actually as a safety, and he's moving to linebacker. So to me, I mean, you have to look if you look at the entire room as a whole, Sneakily, I think it's our most improved unit, even though, granted, the bar was in hell. The bar was super low to begin with, but I think, <laughs> I think now we're in a much, much better spot. But I do think those three of Bethune, Gaynor, and Delos is definitely going to be your three starting linebackers. It's funny because 
the natural reaction to the linebacker position is, okay, look, just play a 4-2-5, play a nickel base and cover it up by putting another DB on the field who can maybe be more of like uh, in the middle run stopping presence. You could do that to cover up a linebacker. But the problem is, and we'll get to this next, just a little teaser, uh, do we have enough DBs that we feel comfortable with covering up even the linebacker position? I'm not sure. Um, and it's going to be, it's funny because whichever one of those two positions produces that extra player that shows enough improvement, like if it's a linebacker that can be good in coverage, you're probably going to see more linebacker than you would otherwise have seen just based on the ability to put that personnel on the field. So I think we'll learn a lot. I think, I, I hope Fuller is adapting to the personnel. Like if our linebacking core is un- unexpectedly good, that we're not just playing nickel all the time for the sake of playing nickel. But like if our DB room, we have a lot of good names in there, a lot of blue chip players in that room. If they're absolutely crushing it, I do expect to play a nickel base and only play situational three linebacker football. So I hope the quality of the personnel dictates what you see on the field. That's all I'm going to say. Now, Max kind of asked me this question about the offensive lineman um, yesterday. Do you see any impact coming from, say, maybe an Omar Graham Jr., the freshman from the 2022 class? That actually, because he he was named, I think, on the first team for all, for Miami. Actually, no, for all the entire state of Florida for for linebackers. So, do you see him actually playing any role, even in the spring game? Maybe cracking the two deep. Do you see him like supplanting a DJ Lundy or a Stephen Dix Jr. Because those are two players that were at the tail end of a kind of a salvage class for Norvell. Or do you see him kind of like? taking a little more time and to like develop and taking a little more time to like, like slowly be brought along until for next season. Well, you know, it's funny. The natural reaction to that question at the linebacker position is, yeah, give them as much, you know, burn as they can get. Maybe they're the answer that we clearly haven't had because really on this depth chart, nobody has jumped out as, you know, the superior linebackers of Florida state pass. Uh, but I would expect him to play in the spring game. That's like the prime opportunity just to take inventory, see what you got. You know, if Omar Graham could be an answer, he's not going to be the answer. He's a freshman, but if he's going to be part of the equation this year, you know, give him a chance to see what he's got in spring, but come day one of season opener against Dick Quesney, I don't expect to see much Omar Graham Jr. If any at all. I love how we're going to have six different ways to say Duquesne. Uh, sorry, we're going to have six different ways to say Duquesne. Duquesne, right Duquesne, here. David Duquesne, David Duquesne. Yes. But folks, yes. I mean, that's right. But I do agree with you, Dave, that I think Omar Graham, because the linebacker room is in that sort of like kind of needs of injection of talent. That's kind of why you did bring in a Tatum Bethune. I think a Gainer, I think Gainer coming back is probably going to definitely help out with depth. That's probably going to be, he's going to be your starter though. But I think hopefully eventually you'll see some one of the, uh, the Dicks or the Lundy caliber kind of take the next step forward. Or maybe, who knows? Who knows? Maybe you're right. We'll talk about it next time. Maybe we'll bring a DB down into putting a linebacking spot. But, folks, yeah. before we do that, here at Locked On Seminoles, we'll be remiss if we you know, talk about our friends over at Run Your Pool. March Madness is only, what, Dave, two and a half weeks away now? Yeah, something like that. I don't think FSU is going to be in it, so hard to pay attention. Yeah, shout out the NIT. But, folks, are you going for the usual or are you looking for the best? We've done our homework here and we're running brackets with runyourpool.com. Along with standard brackets, Run Your Pool offers game types like Survivor or Pickaxe, both really fun in their own way, by the way. They have their options to add scoring and also they offer more intel to make your pits, picks, all stuff you won't find at ESPN or CBS. Clearly, we believe in Run Your Pool because, like I said, we're running our brackets there ourselves. There's no truer test than that. And you want to play against us for a cash? If you want to play against us for a shot at a cash prize, join us at runyourpool.com slash locked on. And while you're there, create your own pool for your friends and family. Enter pure madness. That's pure madness, P U R E M A D N E S at checkout for $10 off your custom pool. All the rules and details will be available there. That's runyourpool.com slash locked on for a chance to win a cash prize. We look forward to seeing you and probably beating you because me and Dave are very good at brackets there. And once you're done at Run Your Pool, head on over to rockauto.com, folks. I've been saying this day in and day out that my uncle, shout out to you, Francisco, for Delray Beach, Florida, has been a customer of Rock Auto for over 20 years. Quite frankly, the main reason behind it, it's run like a family over there. Save time and money whenever using Rock Auto because why choose to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership 
Your boy need new carpets because I spill my coffee all the damn time. Shout out Dunkin' Donuts. But folks, go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. And their How Did You Hear About section so they know that we sent you. Main selection, reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Uh, March Madness is just around the corner. FSU basketball will not be there, but shout out to Feature for yeah. making the best song probably ever when it comes to getting yourself hype up before going out. Dave, we're now towards the end of our spring depth chart unit for the defense, and now we're talking defensive backs. And you kind of yeah. alluded, alluded to it that we're probably going to be playing a lot more DBs and probably bring one down to the linebacking spot. So give me like four to five DBs you see back there starting. Uh, who I think are going to start or who I'd like to see start just for my let's own. Start, let's start with who you think is going to start for who we're going to see in the spring game, and then we can go to who you think should start. How about that? Well, for cornerbacks, as we got later in the season last year, that seemed to shape itself out. Like, I think Jarvis Brownlee, for all of the criticisms that some people have of him, is locked in as a cornerback. And I love the way Jarvis Brownlee plays. Um, he can at times get burnt in coverage, but that he gives you 100% effort on every single play. And he hits like you don't expect cornerbacks to hit in the year 2022. So I think he's locked in. You saw Omarion Cooper come on strong at the end of last season. Uh, a lot of people were, I think, pleasantly surprised by what we got out of him. I think earlier in the year, Kevin Knowles at the nickel position started to like separate himself. And I think later in the year, I was a little more disappointed by the way the year ended. But I think Cooper and Brownlee uh, kind of ended the year as your obvious one, two choices to start 2022. So I think Brownlee is still going to be a starter. I mean, kind of agree with you there. I think personally he should play more safety because like you said, he every single time that we let up a big play, it just seems that somehow he does get burned. Yeah. But to me, I mean, I will see probably cornerback one is going to be Brownlee. Cornerback two, I think, is probably going to be Amarion Cooper as well. And I think maybe for nigga corner, you're going to go with Kevin Knowles. I think Kevin yeah. Knowles is a really, really solid player. And then with the safety spot, I think Jamie Robinson obviously is locked in for that because he definitely played a huge role in yeah. the in how that defense kind of sled it out. Your best DB last year. He was your best. He was he was he was exactly your best DB, especially when he moved from corner to safety. And then this is where I have trouble. I think we're going to see a key. I think we're going to see Renato Green actually starting in the back there. Because I do, do think Renato Green probably is, when fully healthy, your best defensive back. He's kind of my Travis J, like for you. Like he's someone that I have full confidence and faith to believe in if he stays completely healthy. I think definitely he can be your best defensive player overall. But I definitely think that if he's not super healthy, I think Akeem Dent, you know, slides right in there. And Akeem Dent. For some reason, I saw on some mock drafts already for next season, he's like a he's a potential like French first rounder, which is something that I did not I did not see coming heading into next year. Yeah, I saw like two or three different mock drafts having him like in the late twenties. So it's like it's to me, I think we see Renato Green back there. He also, as I mentioned with Tatum Bethune, he was rocking a black jersey at Tour of Duty, I think today or the day before. So to me, this is someone that um I think the back there's gonna have Jamie Robinson and Renato Green. Just, I'll, I'm going to say this, and every time I say this, I piss myself off because last year I was an idiot and got in, got in everybody's eardrums and told you how Travis J was, it was going to be the next coming of Christ in 2021. I'm going to say, I, I've said it before this offseason, I'm going to say it again, one of Travis J or Jamori Tate, and I, I'm telling you it's going to be Travis J, is going to live up to the hype. Those were both extremely highly rated players coming out of high school. All the physical tools were there. They have seemingly both regressed. I know Demory Tate's had injury issues. I, look, too much talent in the two of those bodies for one of them to not excel in this defense, especially when other DBs have improved. Jamie Robinson got better as the year went on, I thought. Like, it, Omarion Cooper got better as the year went on. It is entirely possible. It, it's, the, the excuse can't be Adam Fuller when it comes to all of the DBs because some of them did get better. So Travis J, Demory Tate, one of you is going to do it. Please show out in the spring game. Prove me right. No, Dave, I think you're right. I think one of those two actually is definitely going to probably step forward. And that's why I think that I know this is like goes out of the parameters that we said, said it before. 
I do think that one of those two definitely supplants a cornerback and starts for the rest of the year. And I think personally, it's the Maury Tate. And I think it goes to what you actually highlighted at the beginning of your, of your statement, where he's been injured a lot. Not only yeah. that, he played football a lot later than most people than most people actually know. So to me, that's someone that has like extremely raw talent. And this is year three. Now at this point, it's like you know, with him, it's like a lot of hype. And I think he actually for this year, I think he's definitely going to supplant Jar- Jarvis Brownlee at that spot. And that's more why I think you push Brownlee towards the back and kind of get him used to that for next season. Primarily because Domori takes your corner of the future. He came in here as your almost your last consensus five star before Sam, before yeah. Sam McCall, and even Sam McCall wasn't consensus five star. So to me, this is someone that definitely should see the field a lot, and as he definitely should be living up to the hype very very soon. Yeah, and what I mentioned earlier about like with Omar Graham taking inventory, this is the perfect chance in the spring game, especially when you're talking about splitting the team up into two different units, there's going to be enough spots to go around that Travis J and or Demari K, probably both of them, if healthy, should be able to start at a spot on one of the defenses. Good time to take inventory. I expect that one of them has made some strides. And, and I'm going to say by the end of the year, by the end of the 2022 season, one of those two will be a starter on our defense, in our backfield, defensive backfield. In the spring game, I want to see the two of them start. Um, I, I'm telling you, there's something there. And another thing we haven't mentioned, Jerry and Jones was like at one point last year a starter. He was a starting DB. He's still here. He can still play at a high level. He regressed as the year went on, but don't sleep on him. He can still play at a high level in this defense. And I expect to see a lot of him in the spring game. I think so too. And I think also that we, we take so many DBs, but I think it's also, it allows Adam Fuller and now co DC Randy Shan to kind of plug and play with matchups. And also you need to keep the legs of your DB super, super fresh and keep changing them out. And I think that's something you see with a lot of, you know, Alabama, Clemson and Georgia, where they don't, they, they, they pull some of their better players off to give them a breather or two. And to that, we have a lot of players. And, you know, that leads me to my last point before we, you know, we head out today. What do you think about Sam McCall and Azaria Thomas back there? What do you think are going to be, are going to be their con- contributions during the spring game? And do you think they're going to actually have a, a similar sort of role in our defense like Kevin Knowles and Amaran Cooper did last year? Yeah, again, perfect chance to take inventory. I think, I think Sam McCall between the two of them is probably more polished. If, if there's going to be one of the two that makes an early impact, I expect it to be Sam McCall, but not because Azaria Thomas is any less talented necessarily. Um, Again, the spring game is the chance to plug these kids in and say, show me what you got. You know, take some live reps against our receivers, which we have a lot more of in the room now, and I think you can give the DBs more of a challenge. And look, if they're, the two of them are burnt toast, then okay, good, red trick here. Use the year to get better and practice against, you know, and keep practicing, and we'll see you in 2023. I don't expect with the talent between the two of those players for them both to red shirt. Um, don't be surprised if you see something out of Sam McCall in the spring game. That's all I'm going to say. I would, that wouldn't shock me at all. I think it is super talented. That's kind of actually, I am, what's kind of where I'm at with Azaria Thomas. I actually think Azaria Thomas, when it's all said and done, is going to have the better career of the two. I really, really like, you know, he was a kid that came on late in the cycle. I think he was committed to Florida and then he backed off. And then when we, when he committed that day, and I watched his tape, and I'm like, this kid has a chance to do something re- <clears throat> really, really special with with like, the talent around him. And the fact he's coming in with Sam McCall, and apparently they're developing a very strong relationship with one another. To me, that's sort of, yeah. that's the sort of thing in a backfield you see that you makes you very, very stoked. And probably we haven't seen like a relationship between a a safety and a corner since what Jalen and Lamarcus Joyner or Xavier Rhodes and Lamarcus Joyner. Like that's something that you know yeah. makes, makes us very excited to see. And to me. I know it's hyperbole right now, but folks, it's about to be elite lie season. And trust me, I got a lot up in the chamber. I've been probably one of the more critical of the staff, but it's now March. March Madness is in full effect. And trust me, your boys got some elite lies to send off. But Dave, before we head out, do you have anything, anything last, any last words for the folks to send them home with? Yeah. Kate Rodemaker in a black jersey, man. How about it? Starting quarterback, huh? QB1, Kate Rodemaker. Who knew? I mean, you know, 15 TDs in the spring game and just, you know, blow all our minds. I just, you got to see it coming. It's good to see Tate Rodemaker actually doing that. But folks, on a, on, a, on a real and hot, serious note, thank you guys so much for the love and support each and every single day. We get to do everything we do because of y'all. And 
with that being said, please don't forget five star reviews in our podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, or we get your podcast from I'm Davey Ruddy. Hit the like button at the bottom of this video. Hit the subscribe banner up at the tippy top so you can make sure you know you follow us and ding the little bell so you know that we have when our new content drops immediately. This drops every single Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. But folks, for Drake, that was Dave. We'll see y'all next time on Lockdown Seminoles. Take care, everybody. Go Noles.